Hello YouTube, I hope this video would be interesting, at least it was for me while working on it. So join me today on my journey in investigating and pursuing uncompressed lossless Dolby Atmos. Is this something you need in your life or can you live with a compressed lossy format? So stay tuned and maybe you get some answers. Before we embark on this journey, or testing to be more precise, let's clarify a few terms. Even though you are likely here because you are interested in this topic, it's important we are all on the same page. I also don't pretend to be any sort of an expert on this topic, so sure I will not dive too much into the details. Dolby Atmos, or spatial audio, or 3D, how I like to think of it, gives you this third sound stage above you. That is the main difference at least in my book, between some standard formats like stereo, 5.1 and so on. Officially, it is characterized as object-based audio instead of channel-based and honestly it's too difficult for me to understand the difference, but I guess that actually this may be more relevant for music producers and sound engineers than for us, the consumers. Also to acknowledge, there are other formats in addition to Atmos like DTSX, Auro 3D, Sony 360 and probably others. This world of object-based audio was a true revelation for me and buying the proper equipment, in my case Samsung Soundbar Q930C, capable of reproducing Dolby Atmos and DTSX, was one of the best purchases in the long run. Hearing some music in Dolby Atmos for the first time really blew my mind and also to all the others to whom I played a few songs. It's so good. Unfortunately, it's also still quite young technology, being less than 10 years available in home setups, or it is simply not everybody's cup of tea, and although there are thousands of songs and hundreds of movies and TV shows available in this format, it is my feeling that it is still not yet fully embraced. Many songs and movies are converted to this format without fully utilizing its potential, and I must emphasize this already at the beginning of this video, the sound quality depends heavily on the sound engineer or producer's effort. I know that some of you might say, no shit Sherlock, but I really mean that there may be a day and night difference in the overall experience, something which is maybe not so pronounced in stereo production. Now, let's touch on the topic of compressed versus uncompressed audio. Yes, it is controversial per se, meaning is there a real difference between uncompressed sound like WAVE or AIFF versus high quality but still heavily compressed MP3 files of 320 kilobits per second? What kind of equipment do you need to have to tell the difference? Or to be even more precise, how much does that equipment need to cost you? Where you should focus on when listening to such music? On vocals? Bass? Where? And still, is this something scientifically confirmed with a simple blinded ABX test? A lot of questions and the focus of this video is for sure not to answer those, however I need to put a disclaimer, I am among the majority who don't hear the difference in sound quality between compressed and uncompressed music. The focus here is to investigate the difference between lossy, compressed and lossless, uncompressed Dolby Atmos. Again, without diving too much into technical details and as far as I understood, lossy Dolby Atmos comes usually via the codec called Dolby Digital Plus, while lossless usually comes via True HD. We will examine the details, I mean metadata of the files I'll be testing later. We all know that lossy or compressed Dolby Atmos is the mainstream version, which you get from all streaming services like Netflix, Amazon Prime and so on, at least at the time of making this video, but you also get from using streaming services like Tidal, Amazon Music Unlimited, Apple Music, not to mention Spotify, which doesn't even have some hi-fi plan to offer. So, compressed version is a commercialized one, meaning that it is acceptable for most people. <laughs> but then, you read somewhere in some article or a thread on Reddit that there is a difference between compressed Dolby Atmos and lossless uncompressed one, actually a highly noticeable difference. And once you hear Dolby Atmos in uncompressed format, meaning in all its glory, you don't go back to the compressed one. Also, another issue is that if you have a piece of equipment in which you already invested a certain amount of money, would you be satisfied to get, I don't know, 60 or 70% of its capabilities, or you would like to use 100% of what your equipment is capable of? So, let's finally start with what this video is about. 
me testing the difference between compressed and uncompressed Dolby Atmos. And now the moment you have all been waiting for, including me, the testing. So nowadays there are plenty of uh, media devices capable of reproducing and playing Dolby Atmos. But uh, for, for my home setup, uh, I opted for the most practical one. And uh, actually shout out to some of you in the comment sections for, of one of my previous videos who suggested this setup. So I will be using my laptop as the source of sound and it will be connected uh, via an HDMI cable. It is an 8K uh, UHD cable, ultra high speed. Uh, this will be connected to the soundbar Samsung Q930C in its uh, HDMI in port, meaning that uh, it is an overkill for sure because this is 2.1 uh, HDMI cable while this uh, port, uh, HDMI in, is only 2.0. But in any case, for, for just audio files, uh, Dolby Atmos, the, I think even 1.4 HDMI, but for sure 2.0 is uh, perfectly capable of digesting all the information, all the data. It is uh, basically more for the picture quality, refresh rate and uh, resolution. And on the laptop, uh, I will be using uh, VLC player which uh, I think is one of the most versatile capable of reproducing vast majority of uh, formats and codecs and speaking about the files I've been testing actually it was challenging to find the same video clip or a song in both lossy and lossless Dolby Atmos formats for a fair comparison meaning the same content but different quality eventually I managed to find a few just don't ask me where and how I chose two music videos for this test the first is Bailando by Enrique Iglesias, which has multiple audio tracks embedded into one file that can be easily switched in VLC player. The second is Escape by KX5, a collaboration between Cascade and Dead Mouse, remixed by Technodad, a well-known figure in the Dolby Atmos community. Although KX5's entire album is among the best Dolby Atmos albums available on streaming services, Technodad's remix stands out. It highlights the importance of a skilled sound producer in creating Dolby Atmos content. I can confidently distinguish between Technodad's mix and the original version, regardless of the format. His mix is simply superior. The test I will be using is the most convenient, most controlled, most unbiased test I can think of doing in my home settings, following the methodology of the so-called ABX test. Now, I know some hardcore audiophiles might raise an eyebrow, but I guess those people invested a lot of money in their equipment and they need to justify somehow their purchase. Actually. I will be doing a version of this test where in 10 consecutive rounds sample A and sample B will be played to me and in each round I would need to say which I like better or simply for which I think it is uncompressed lossless Dolby Atmos. Of course, in every round uncompressed and compressed versions would be randomly assigned either to sample A or B. I will be doing 10 rounds of guesses to minimize the chances that I correctly guess it simply by luck, or in other words, to get statistical significance. Now, the biggest issue with this testing is our short-term memory, and some would argue that when testing something of a very similar sound quality, we are capable of remembering what we have heard for 10-15 seconds at max. So the speed of switching between the samples is very important. For that, there are dedicated softwares you can use to quickly switch between the samples back and forth while kept blinded. However, and unfortunately, I could not find any software which would be capable of reproducing this format, MKV, in which you mostly find audio in Dolby Atmos. So I will be simply using previously mentioned VLC player. Obviously, to keep everything as objective as possible, I will be kept blinded. Or in other words, my wife will be playing to me those two versions, switching between and using different parts of the song, everything as I wish. Also, she will be laying down on a floor with the laptop faced against me, not to interfere with the sound flow in the room, and for sure she will not make any facial expressions during the test. So potentially and hopefully you may agree, this is the most objective test we can conduct. Okay, round one. And this is how I started with the test, with the song by Lando, full of enthusiasm and focused, although I did not have a clue what to focus on. Thus, my goal for the initial couple of rounds was to establish the focus point in a song which I would then use throughout the rounds. In the first one, 
I was obviously going back and forth between the two samples a lot of times, but I did not opt to listen different parts of the song because it is fairly straightforward, maintaining the rhythm and the presence of instruments and vocals throughout its whole duration. And Eureka moment where I thought I got it for the first time. In the first round I opted for the sample B. And would you guess, I was right. Over the next 20 minutes I continued this audio journey, testing round after round. But don't worry, I won't bore you to death with that footage. Instead, let's cut to the chase and reveal the results. And there you have it. 6 out of 10. It seems pretty random, doesn't it? After this, I made a well needed break of 20 minutes and started with a little bit less enthusiasm to test the second song. But after going back and forth between the samples for several minutes in the first round, I gave up. I simply could not hear any difference whatsoever. Despite my initial hopes of demonstrating the stark contrast between Lossy and Lossless Dolby Atmos, I find myself somehow relieved with these results. Why, you ask? because it means that we aren't missing out on the ultimate Dolby Atmos experience offered by all the streaming services. Imagine the following scenario. Tidal decides to introduce uncompressed Dolby Atmos via the True HD codec tomorrow and doubles the price. Based on my tests, I can confidently declare that it wouldn't worth the extra cost. Now, this might not hold true for everyone. There could be some golden-eared listeners among us who can discern the difference. But let me assure you, it's not the day and night difference that some might lead you to believe. Those who claim the otherwise, well, maybe they are simply a salesperson. So, what's the takeaway here? Sit back, relax, and enjoy the music. Don't expend your energy and resources chasing the elusive, uncompressed Dolby Atmos. Instead, channel your energy towards the artists who are going the extra mile, using their talent to deliver the best possible Dolby Atmos mixes and versions of songs. After all, it is in these creative endeavors where this technology truly shines. So there you have it, dear YouTube. By the way, maybe a trained eye has spotted this new camera in the home setup. This is Samsung S90C OLED. For sure I am not an expert in TVs, but I can give you my two cents also about this purchase. So if you would be interested in that, stay tuned. Until then, bye.